In this video, you are going to learn how to compute slope and d8 flow direction grid using a digital elevation model. As we know that the delineation of stream network and watershed boundaries in GIS using a DEM is based on the principle that the water flows downstream. And each cell in a DEM, except the cells on the edges, are surrounded by eight neighboring cells. The D8, which translates to eight direction. So the D8 flow direction method assumes that the water from any cell will flow to one of its steepest downslope neighboring cells. So let's try to see what this steepest downslope means and how to calculate that and how that is used in calculating the D8 flow direction. So again, the idea is if the target cell is this, the water from this cell will only flow to one of these eight neighboring cells. And that's the D8 flow direction method. What we see here is a DEM. This DEM is a field DEM, which means there are no sinks. And each cell has an elevation value and the cell size in this case is one unit. You can assume one meter or one feet. And then what we have done here is we have just labeled each cell by using alphabetical letters. Now let's see how we can calculate slope for one of these cells. So I'm going to use this cell M and see how we can get the steepest downslope from M. So I'm showing this cell M that has elevation of 22 and then it is surrounded by these eight cells and also showing the label for each of them. So we are interested in finding the steepest downslope for M. Now you can see this is higher than 22. So the water will not flow there. The water will not flow here. The water will not flow, not here, not here not here because all these values are higher than the elevation 22 for cell M. So water can either flow to S or to R and that is dependent on which one of them has the steepest slope. So let's calculate the slope from M to S. So M to S, so the elevation of M is 22 elevation of S is 16, so 22 minus 16 divided by the distance between them. So in this case, the cells are diagonally located. So we will use one square plus one square. That is 1.414. And if you do this calculation, you will get 4.24. Now let's also calculate the slope from MR. So M is 22, elevation value is 22 minus 21. And these are located vertically, one above the other. So we will use one, which is the cell size. So the slope from M to R is one. Slope from M to S is 4.24, which means this is the steepest slope. So the water from M will flow to s and then we can also draw the flow direction for this okay so we have the slope value and we know in which direction it is going now let's try doing this for one more cell so i will pick cell q so again we have our cell q it has an elevation of 47 and i'm showing all the eight neighboring cells so again this is higher this is higher this is higher this is higher so the water from q can flow to one of these four cells so again we can calculate the slope and see which one has the steepest slope so we can say slope q m which is 47 minus 22 divided by again square root of one square plus one square if you do that you will get 17.7 we can calculate slope from Q to R. So this will be 47 minus 21. So these are 
next to each other horizontally so the distance is 1 which is the cell size so we have 26 so we can do s q w so that will be 47 minus 12 divided by again the diagonal distance and so this is 25 divided by 1 point or 35 divided by 1.414 so that comes to 24.7 or let's say 8 and then we have s q v so that will be 47 minus 34 divided by the distance between them which is 1 so this comes to 13 so you can see that this is the highest so the in this case we are going to say that the water will flow from q to r so the direction will be this so what we can do now is we can write the slope values for m and q so the slope value for m in our case is going to be 4.24 because that's the highest or steepest downslope you found for m and similarly for q it's going to be 26 and we also know the direction in which the water may flow based on that steepest slope so this is the direction we have for m and then this is the direction we have for q now if you want you can pause here and try to calculate the steepest slope and direction for any of these cells what i have done here is i have done similar calculations and filled up the slope grid so we start with elevation find the steepest slope and we have those values so in the previous slide we calculated this and this and based on these values we also know in which direction the water is going to flow so i'm showing you arrows here now look at this cell which is which has a value of negative one so we can think of this as sort of outlet if you look at that you can see all the cells around 11 have higher elevations which means it may be going to one of these cells because we don't have the, the elevation for those we don't know so that's why I just gave a value of negative 1 which means we can just think of this as the outlet and the water will flow somewhere after that point uh, so based on the slope values I have given arrows to all the cells except for the outlet which I mark here in, in color red now as humans we can see these arrows but the computer cannot see arrows so what we do then is we replace these arrows with one of these eight values depending on in which direction the water is flowing so for example if the water is flowing to a cell uh, to the east it will get a value of one for its flow direction if the water is flowing to south then the cell will get a value of four so we replace these arrows in this grid with the d8 flow direction values and when you calculate flow direction grid in gis using d8 method you will see all the cells having one of these eight values and i'm showing you here a sample result from from gis so this is a flow direction grid and you can see it's it has maybe hundreds of thousands of cells but you can see all of these cells have values ranging from 1 through 128 based on the d8 flow direction uh, figure we saw in the previous slide so i hope you understood how to calculate the steepest downslope and how the flow direction grid gets calculated in gis